Right guys, welcome now to the Monday Night Golf Show questions and answers. And we, yet again, have been absolutely smashed with questions. Yeah, we're going to try and get through as many as we can. Yeah, so we'll try five from each platform and then see yeah, where we go done, from there. We've done Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, so we'll do five off each uh, to make it fair. Five at random. Um, to, to, to Tom Martin, 1992. Uh, what distance can you hit each club? Gapping in between each club, etc. Um, it's I don't know, I don't know yet because I've just got my new club so yeah and I'm I'm unsure and if you watch any course videos I'm very unsure uh, I'd, I'd say you're more unsure on the short it's just when you need to try and control the little yeah. shots that's I'm when the issues come so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some gap testing just possibly even well. today um, to do some, right now <laughs> today. in fact cut the video off I'm gonna start <laughs> doing it um, I, you'd like to see about twelve to t ten to twelve yards between each iron shot. As a rule. That's what people generally say. Uh, Luke Bishop, how did you meet Mr. Finch? Mr. Peter Finch, not just Mr. Finch, Mr. Mm. Peter Finch. I like it. I, I don't know. How did you meet Mr. Peter Finch? Well. Was it the same time you met me? <laughs> I met Mr. Peter Finch. Um, so we went to college together, going back to the year 2002. So we wow. met in 2002. Was it 2002 or 2001? Yeah. No, 2002. So yeah. we went to college together at a college called MySco College, which is a sports kind of agricultural. It's a uh, it's a good word. It's kind of an, a, a practical college. Yeah, it's, it's practical for practical people. Uh, it's an agricultural college with kind of a football. Um, it had a bit of everything. Yeah, it, 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 the only thing it didn't have, it wasn't like a science -y college, yeah. or like an English language college. It was a agriculture and sports. Those were the two main things. So myself and Peter, we signed up to do the golf course, which is a two-year course when we were 16, straight out of school. Um, didn't know each other before that. And really through college, we didn't really know each other that super well. Pete would live outside of college because college was in Preston and Pete lived in Preston or I lived in in college. So we kind of mixed with different circles of friends but still kind of knew each other and got on. Uh, but it wasn't until Pete started working at Trafford got... Oh no, PGA. So then we did our PGA course in... What year would that have been? Oh God. That would have been... I was nine. I was probably 18. Yeah, so it was 19, 2000, 19. 2002, 3, 4, about 5 maybe started, 2005? Yeah, like so that. 2005, when we do our PGA course as a, as a PGA professional here in the UK and Europe, is that you uh, participate in a three-year course and one week every year you go down to the headqu headquarters and do an intensive week of training and drinking, and uh, <laughs> one of those weeks, which Hydration, is- Hydration, uh, water, water. Got, uh, Yeah, naturally. Um, it's a residential, which is based at the Belfry, so the Midlands uh, in the UK, that's where the headquarters of the PGA are, and we just happened to be on the same course, on the same week, residential course, and got on really well there, um, socialized a little bit more, we're a bit older, we'd worked a little bit, kind of knew what we wanted to do in lives, um, and then we kind of both qualified. Did Were you at the- um, What's the, what's it called? The I was in the, the graduation. Graduation. I, uh, no, I turned my nose up at the graduation. Wow. So then didn't probably see him for about maybe five or six years as we both parted ways, coaching, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, journalism and <laughs> and all this other jazz. And then I was working at Trafford Golf Centre for about two or three years. We had an application form in from a certain Peter Finch, which there was two of. In our area, there was Peter Finch, who was a teaching pro elsewhere, and then this Peter, Peter Finch, and we said, well, which one is it? And then we, obviously, as soon as we found out it was this Peter Finch, um, we reluctantly gave him the job. So, yeah, and ever since that, the uh, it's all history, as you would say. True story. Well, there you go. You couldn't write this stuff. No. You couldn't write this stuff. Memoirs from Rick and Pete. Uh, should we go over to, let's chuck on Facebook. Um, so, yeah, that's how we met. We might have told this story before, and if we have, we apologise, but maybe not in that much depth. Right, it's going to pick a nice easy name. Uh, ben Matthew Wake. Good, good choice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you guys consider doing the longest golf day challenge in, aids of Ma in aid of Macmillan? And if so, i do it with you. Can I do it with you? Um, when is the longest day? Is it June, July? I, in fact, it's the same week as Open Qualifying. I'm oh, almost certain of it. Oh, is it? I'm almost certain the longest day is the same week as Open Qualifying, about 20th of June. I mean, I, I'm pretty I, sure. I, I've done the Macmillan kind of day challenge before. Um, for guys in the States, but I don't think Macmillan's a, a United States kind of 
base. It's mo Character. basically base UK. Uh, it's basically seventy two holes in a day. But do uh, we have money. do we have longer? Is our longest day longer than the longest American day? Um, our longest day is super super long. Nah, I think it depends where you are. Because if you're oh, yeah, high, true. high north, north, it's north yeah. Long. Sorry, yeah. So, <laughs> if you're in Alaska. <laughs> What a silly, <laughs> silly question. Yeah, Alaska, you can play 24 hours golf. <laughs> Sorry, what's, that was a stupid question. It's okay, um, like, everyone, like, no one, no, one, no one holds a grudge. Yeah, no, it was a bit stupid, to be fair. So we might not be able to do it this year because of the uh, the Open. It wouldn't be maybe a good idea to do that just the day before the Open. No, yeah, 72. It'd be good practice. Uh, Paul Tyson uh, from Twitter. Surely Adam Scott is a deserved fave heading into Augusta. We just, um, we just spoke about this off camera, actually. Yeah, we? yeah. I mean, yeah, he's got to be. I mean, he's got to be... If you win two weeks in a row, you've got to be favourite for everything. It's four weeks till the Masters. <laughs> <laughs> so only four weeks to the Masters. So, it, it, yeah, I think, he's, I think he's on track, let's say. Yeah, I think any anyone who wins who wins like that, and probably in that style as well, how he he didn't... No one... Well, you could say McElroy kind of obviously slipped back, but there was pressure on him. And he kind of... He came through on that back nine, yes. you know, making the birdies, making the up and downs, and that's a really good sign. So if the pressure was on, especially with his putting, if the pressure's on his putting, and he's managed to keep in holding putts, and that is a very, very good sign. It's exciting. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> Chris, this is Instagram again. Chris in Wigan, one five six, one five nine. Sorry. Hey, Chris in Wigan. Uh, oh yeah, Chris in Wigan. Sorry, yeah, Chris in Wigan. One five nine. Um, all right, lads. All right, yeah, Chris. He's, he's, he's from Wigan. All right, no, let's try and think. Oh, I'm not even going to attempt a Wigan accent, even though I live right around the corner from Wigan. I'm not going to attempt it. Um, all right, lads. I'm playing off eleven, but I have a real problem with the. Um, he shouted actually, but I'm going to whisper it. Yeah. I have had some lessons and always been fixed, but always keep returning those little scoundrels. Uh, done a load of drills. Can you help, please? Or I will be swapping my clubs for fishing tackle. Oh, wow. Not what we want to hear. That's desperate times. And if you start that, missing the, the lake to the right, <laughs> what happens then? <laughs> what happens then? Um, so, Chris in Wigan, 159. Um, Shanks, you've got to be careful with Shanks because the, the idea of even just hitting the hosel of the golf club that makes the balls shoot low or to the right, uh, it can be quite a demanding and taxing um, effect on, on your, your confidence in golf. And that's one of the things with it is that it, it really affects your confidence. If lessons have worked, make sure it's not just short fixes that are taking place or, or quick fixes. Mm. That are taking place. I think. I think with the shank. I mean, the shanks are they're confidence destroying. Just simply because if you hit a, if you hit it out of the heel and it kind of flies off to the right, there's no real way that that's going to end up okay. The way that it kind of flies off to the right. No sir. So you can't really get away with it. But with a if you are piping it or lateral shot, whichever way you want to look at it, you've got the underlying cause. You know, nine times out of ten, you're either coming too steep from the outside or you're hitting too much from the inside. So you're coming steep from the outside, presenting hosel, or too much from the inside and pushing the, the hosel out. too severe. Yeah, to, towards the ball. So you need to diagnose which is the underlying cause of that. Yeah. Which one of those it is, and then you can start to work on, you know, work on the underlying cause from each of those paths. If you've been so measured and your path is relatively neutral, because this can also happen, and your path is relatively neutral but you're still hitting the heel. You've got to check whether you're early extended as you come in to hit, whether your hips are actually moving forward. So draw, if uh, if that's your posture, that's your spine, that's your bum, that's your legs, that's your head. I'm the head. <laughs> draw a Massive line. Head on the, on a very small body, that. <laughs> draw a line on the back of your bum, and if you notice that the that you move away from that line, so your hips move upwards, the hands will move out. And you end up hitting the heel. So I'm looking at myself in the monitor. <laughs> your hips move forward as you hit. So this kind of action as you hit it, your hands are going to move up. This is great. Oh, up. <laughs> who, need, <laughs> who needs Sky Sports? <laughs> who, need, who needs a Sky Car? Are you watching Sky? You got, you got this. <laughs> are you watching Sky? Got that. So up, 
Handle moves forward, heel gets presented, even though you might be presenting fantastic path numbers, the heel gets presented anyway. Use tape, face tape, use spray, the foot spray, use anything you can to give you the sensation of hitting the toe and make sure that you're not early, early extending. Yeah, make sure you're keeping this rigid. Yeah. It's not nice, but everyone goes through it at one time or the other. Mm, not really. Um, I've never shanked it. Andrew Nelson, just a week before <laughs> open call and that's when I'll catch the shanks. <laughs> In fact, Chris, don't come close. It's contagious. <laughs> but best of luck. And if you are struggling, you're only in Wigan, come and see us at Quest Golf Academy. We will sort you out a treat. Uh, where have we not been? Facebook again. Let's go Facebook. <clears throat> Easy name. Uh, Craig Barrett. Uh, Rick. Nailed it. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. I work with GC2 and have similar swing speed and launch conditions as yourself. It's funny how many people do. Mm. Uh, but do not get the same distances and results with driver like you do. When you hit drive well over 300 yards. Well, what can I say? I take it you have the temperature settings at high temperature and well above sea level. Well, oh, wow. <laughs> well, thank you, Craig. That's lovely of you to say. Should your test not be set at sea level and temperature close? <laughs> averages. I love it. So, Craig, if you do use GC2, you will know that you cannot change temperature. You cannot change sea level. So you're talking a load of utter rubbish already. And if you just happen to consider that my efficiency is sensational, my smash factor is unbelievably amazing. So my efficiency as I come in to hit the ball... Sorry, I'm going to say it. <laughs> my smash factor as I come into the ball, my club head speed delivery and where I strike and my spin rate and launch angle and everything else makes the ball travel an awful long way. Facts. Yeah. When we went to ping... That number phone again. When we went to ping... <laughs> it's Craig. When we went to ping, he said, the, the guys at the ping fitting centre said they've never seen an efficient swing. We were having the longest drive competition and I was generating much less club head speed, but almost out driving Pete. He was on it that day. He was smashing it over the yeah. fence and far away. But the smash factor, 1.5, 1.51, 1.5, 1.51. It's efficiency of strike. And really, really do you have the same club head speed and launch conditions and all that jazz? But going back off your topic, there, there is no way that I set the GC2 different. What would be the advantage of that? Because when this GC2 and I get the new one, what's or I move softwares or I move launch monitors, it's pointless me trying to cheat the system. I do not cheat the system because it has no advantage to me at all. And if you look at my game golf stats, I hit it way over 300 yards on many occasions. Are you getting a phone call now? Different number. Different number? Yes, yeah. sir. No, mine finished in 7-6. Oh, right, okay. Um, so, yeah, Craig... I appreciate your question, but I also am not pleased that you are um, accusing me of fudging numbers. I think that's really unfair of you to do, so I'd appreciate if you didn't. Um, right, on that note. Uh, <laughs> thanks for your questions. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, where have I gone here? Oh, what are you doing? Oh, it's all gone crazy now. Uh, Robert Legg. One for you, no, it says another one for you, Rick. How does your wife cope when you're off golfing trips? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, she is lovely and understanding, and she is a, a, a true superstar and a, a fantastic mother and wife. Um, well done, that's good. Yeah, I know, that's good. <laughs> I'm well, in the, very well practiced. I'm kind of in the doghouse. <laughs> no, no, not really. Um, uh, no, you are. Okay. Andrew Scott just wanted to acknowledge how cheerful Finch is in all of his videos. Always seems happy and in high spirited and high spirited makes this channel a joy to watch. Wow. That's a lot of why. That's, wow. that's actually a for, for Pete, that's actually a hate comment. That's how <laughs> Pete's comments are that lovely and nice. That that would almost be seen as one of the negatives. Um no, oh, yeah, I'd completely agree. He's incredibly cheerful on camera he's incredibly upbeat on camera are we are we people trying to get hold of us I, I something don't, happened I, I don't know i'm getting another missed call off a no caller this time um <clears throat> he's he's very cheerful on camera he's very upbeat on camera he's very happy on camera i'll say no more what happens off camera stays off camera yeah. uh right sorry pete go on you jump on one you you feel feel free okay um, anyway I'll just ring this number back. 
Um, da, da, da. Well, Scott underscore 79. Thoughts on Titleist losing so many tour players? Is it more about money or quality of equipment? So, interesting one. Yeah, all about the dough. Uh, Titleist don't like to sign players who weren't playing Titleist when they were younger. They don't, a bit like Ping, they don't massively go in there and, and uh, yeah, splash the cash to sign the players that they want. Their equipment is sensational and they're happy with um, their equipment so they don't, need to, they don't need to pay people to use it. People... Should we just answer this and see what's going on? Just, yeah, quickly answer it and just say we film it. Should we put it on? No, because it could be anyone. <laughs> Hello? Uh, Pete. Hello. Neil Tapping. It's Neil Tapping at Golf Month. <laughs> Hi, Neil. Go, but... So it's Neil Tapping from Golf Month. Neil, Neil we're what? just filming the Monday Night Golf Show. And you, you, Hello. and I think you've, have you tried to ring us a few times? I've tried to ring you. I've just, tried, I've just left a message on your mobile. <laughs> right, OK. Can we, can we call you back in five minutes or so? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Unless you want to join us. Guys, if you've not if you've not seen any Golf Monthly's YouTube channel as well, go and check it out. They've got some great videos. They've just posted a load of tailor-made fitting videos, which were very good, Neil. By the way, we have indeed. Thank you. Very good Thank video. You. So go and check that out, and we'll call you back in about five minutes' time. <laughs> okay, all right, chaps. Thanks, Neil. See you later, bud. Bye. 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 Friends of the show. So. Um, so yeah, I think Titleist, they make great equipment and I think when companies come in who are new to the, to the beat and they want to sign golfers from different brands, they splash the cash and I'm not surprised people move. McElroy. Yeah, <clears throat> classic example. I mean, <laughs> Titleist are quite good. Tiger. Aren't yeah, Tiger, Tiger Woods. Yeah. Well, we went, when we were at Titleist kind of last year, we were speaking to the guys. They have a... You know, it was two years ago. A, no. 2014. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Get out of here. And what did they call it? It was like a it was like a future future pro oh, yeah. development yeah. team or whatever. But they go out to amateur events, find kind of like the best players in their opinion, give them equipment early, gets them on side, so when they turn pro, they're already kind of like playing tight yeah. lists and that bit, kind of gets them on side. So a bit like what Ping does. Ping Ping sees the, the opportunities early and signs the potential talent. Well, not even signs them, just looks after the potential talent and yeah. then lets them breed from there. It's an early investment and, and it, you know, it pays off. You've got speed, you've got Scott. You know, these are tight, long, late, lifelong titleist players. So yes. it does pay off. Yeah, you, I think you get a more loyal, uh, but well, hopefully more loyal uh, ambassador when you've signed them early, potentially. Mm. I don't know. Um, da -da 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 -da. Peter, this is from Will. Strafford. Peter, how are your PSI irons going in the early stages of your relationship? <laughs> oh. Ooh. Uh, well, Pete it, and PSI tour sitting in a tree. Well, I, I only changed my relationship status to the PSIs. Uh, <laughs> last week, so. First comes fate, <laughs> then comes draws, <laughs> then comes being with a long... Golf shot. Golf shot. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, they're going okay. Um, I've not played with them yet. I'm going to hopefully play with them later on today. So we'll see. Done. Uh, Sean Cartwright. Rick? Question mark. Giggsy or Mourinho? Uh, can I have a third option? <laughs> I don't know who it would be, but I kind of feel like I need a third option. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't believe you can give Giggs the mantle. I would like to see Mourinho with the sidekick of Giggs. But has Giggs really done anything? I don't know. It's so hard to say. But another fantastic way. 1 0 defeat this weekend. So. Woo! Woo! Go, Van Gaal. Um, where should we go? Well, well maybe it's the last one, I think. Oh, our friend of the show. Yeah. One of our true friends, Jutta Jordans, who was. Uh, a German lady who came over for a week's worth of golf lessons with Pete here in Lytham. So when we get excuses about people being too far away, there is no excuses. You can get here. And she was train, bus, boat, Everything. helicopter, hot air balloon to get here and back from Lytham. Uh, but she made it and she improved massively because of that. Uh, sorry. Uh, so anyway, thanks for your question. Just Because this was brought up in the Saunton vlog. If you could tee up as a four ball better ball pair at the open, would you win. So, at Saunton, you might have seen the matches that we played against South. Uh, the last part will be going up... Today? No? Tomorrow? Mm. I'm today, and then tomorrow, yeah. It might be the last part today. So... <laughs> 
but watch. Um, and watch Steve's video. Um, yeah, it was great going down with those guys, with Steve and James, because they really are top guys, and we, we have a good time with them, and, and we play some amazing golf with them. Um, I think we I think we possibly worked it out that we were maybe four or five under as a bettable partnership, um, which really, in hindsight, is what we need to be doing on our own. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it would have been better than that. Do you think? Yeah. I well, think actually, so. you were like four under through five holes or something. Fact, whatever. Ridiculous. Yeah, I think, I think I think you be, had an amazing middle spell. That. I was. You, we took our turns in giving each other piggybacks on the yeah, last dovetail, week. Dovetail very <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah, very nicely. Uh, we're gonna say yes. Yeah, mm. I, I think I think if we both play well, I mean. Well, to be fair, we, we're speaking to uh, to Shake soon, so I think. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be able to get in the openings of four ball better pool, no problem at all. Uh, right, on that side note, and a completely in joke, private joke. Guys, thanks so much for watching. You've been amazing as always. Thanks for your questions. We apologise, we can't get through them all, otherwise, this would be this is already a 23 minute video. Um, Ridiculous stuff, anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, guys, thanks so much. You've been awesome. Questions are always appreciated. Stay tuned for next week. Stay tuned for this week's. Uh, B4 show on Quest Golf Channel. We're going to try and get some more content up on here. We're just uh, just finding time to do it. Uh, do subscribe to Pete. Do subscribe to me because we've got a busy week playing in tournaments. So fingers crossed. Wish us luck below. That'd be great to hear your thoughts whether we're going to do well this week. Yep. Hopefully so. Bye. Cheerio. Cheerio.